So this is my 100% whole wheat starter. It's 125 grams total volume. I started with the 25 grams of starter I put in the jar and then I did 50 grams of water and 50 grams of flour. And I kept that refrigerated for a week just to make it last until I needed it. So now this is everything that I'm gonna need to do the next step. And this is called making the base for the bread, the leaven. It's a 100% ratio again of starter to water to flour, but it's in a larger quantity than what we have in this little jar, right? This is only 125 grams of starter that I perpetually keep alive in my refrigerator. So I'm going to pull 100 of the grams out of this jar, leaving the remaining 25 grams in the jar, and then make my bread from those 100 grams I pull out. I'm gonna then refeed the 25 grams that are left in this jar. I'm gonna stir it all up and put it back in the refrigerator. This jar is what I'm gonna make my 300 grams of leaven in. It's basically, again, that 100, 100, 100 ratio, and it'll fill up to that purple line. And then after another like eight to 10 hours, depending on your house temperature, it'll double. When it doubles, then you start forming your bread dough. So if I do this, it's six, it's um, 7.30 in the morning. I might not be starting to bake my bread until five o'clock this afternoon, depending on how long it takes. And then this is a jar of water that I use for making all the bread. All it is is tap water, but our water has a lot of chlorine in it. And it's been, I've read that you can slow down the process or shunt the, the yeast growth by using chlorinated water. So they say that you can just take the tap water out, sit it in a jar on your counter overnight, and it'll evaporate the chlorine out of it. And then I use this for all of my bread mix, um, bread mixing. So I'm adding 100 grams of room temp water. 100 grams of active starter. Stir that up just a little bit so that it makes the flour easier to incorporate. Chopstick works really well. And now 100 grams of bread flour. This step could also be done with whole wheat flour if you want a wheat, uh, higher wheat content of your bread. I'm going to use the chopstick again just to incorporate all this until it's all mixed up, no dry chunks at all. And then I use a nice skinny spatula to go down in there and clean the side of the jar off so everything's down into the dough. Now it's time to refeed the starter. 50 grams of water into the jar of remaining 25 grams of starter and then 50 grams of whole wheat flour to then stir in and place that back in the refrigerator for next time when I'm ready to bake. This is what your leaven will look like after it's doubled, and then we move on to the next step. So here we're adding 230 grams of water to start our dough. We're gonna pour in the leaven the 300 grams and you'll see it would float or will float so that means that it's got plenty of air bubbles in it so it's a good live active culture so I'll use the spatula to get all that out of the jar and into the water Now that I have the leaven in the water, I break it up a bit with the spatula and that helps the flour to incorporate a little bit more easily. So to reiterate, I have 300 grams of leaven, 230 grams of water, and a total of 400 grams of flour for this recipe. 
bulk fermentation is now started. So start your timer on the whole process. Now that I'm done with the chopstick, I'll clean the chopstick off and then use my hand to continue bringing the flour and water together just to make sure all the sides of the bowl are cleaned off and there's no chunks of flour left in the dough. This auto lease step is basically letting the dough sit, bringing all the water and flour together so that the flour is fully hydrated prior to putting the salt in. And I'll let it sit for about 20 minutes and before putting that final salt in. When I add this salt, I'll sprinkle about half of the salt on top, use my fingers and just push it into the dough and then sort of fold the dough on top of it and work it back in until the surface of the dough is sticky again. And then I'll sprinkle the rest of the salt on the top of the dough and then go ahead and press it in and fold it back in until you can't feel any more salt granules. At that point, you're done mixing the dough and salt together. You can cover it and let it sit for 20 minutes before you start doing your repeated stretch and folds over the next few hours until the dough is ready to refrigerate. Okay, now that we have it all incorporated, you can see it kind of settles and spreads out a little bit, a little bit sticky, looks like that. So now what we're gonna do is what they call stretch and fold. So basically you grab the dough, just kind of separate the edges from the bowl. And then I grab it in the middle. And I will break it free from the bowl. And I stretch it, let it stretch, and then fold it over. And I'm going to do it the opposite direction. So I'm going to grab it like this. And I wet my hands slightly before I did this. Break it free of the bowl. Let it kind of stretch down. Put it together. And I'll do like two of those. So now that I've done stretch and folding of the dough every 20 minutes for a couple hours with my house around 64 degrees, you can see the shape that the dough is holding. It's got some strength to the surface and I am doing a poke test by putting a little flour on the surface and poking the dough. If it indents and then pops back out slowly but leaves a little bit indent, it's supposedly okay. So I grab my Pyrex dish to hold the bread shape, kind of the loaf shape, and I'm gonna line it with some parchment paper. And this is like 400 and 25, 450 degree parchment paper because I'm going to end up cooking the bread in this parchment paper. So I place this in the dish and then I'll do my final shaping to get as much tension in the surface of the dough as possible on my dough mat. And then I'll lift the dough up and sit it into this dish. That will hold the dough and allow it to slowly do the final uh bulk fermentation or proofing in the refrigerator overnight dropping the temperature of it letting it sour up a bit and then I'll cook it in the morning so I'm just going to sprinkle a little whole wheat flour in the bottom just to help it from sticking but I've never had a problem with it sticking um, then I'll grab the the dough get it out and kind of do the final shaping of it I'm doing this as a very um, if you watch other videos, they go really in depth with it. I'm kind of just half-assing it, which maybe is good, maybe is bad. I don't know, but it seems to work out okay. And I'm popping air bubbles that are on the surface of the dough because there's a lot of air bubbles that work its way up to the surface. So I just kind of pinch those to get the air out, cover it with some flour, some whole wheat flour. So it's not super sticky, then I can pick it up and sit it in the Pyrex dish. So now my next step is to put it in the refrigerator. So you also want to keep it covered. So what I'm going to do is I take a plastic, plastic Sterilite tub and I put it lid side down. 
put this on top of it. I take my towel that will not stick. It doesn't have any lint or anything that'll stick to the dough when the dough starts to rise because the dough will rise and it'll be a little damp. So I'm gonna put that on top, make it like that, and that traps all the moisture in. And then that slides into the refrigerator and I'll pull that out in the morning and start baking. Now the fun part, seeing what happened overnight. You can see how much it filled in the Poofs back slowly, looks good to go. Now we get to score. Mm -hmm. 